for them. Uh, feel free to go click on that link on YouTube and watch it afterwards. Um, but man, the, the main thing today is just to really connect with us online. Uh, this enables us to be together, to walk together. Um, we're about to dive in and we think it's going to be a great time together today. So if you want to share this video, I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, House and I have shared it on our pages. It really just is a way where you can let people know, hey, I'm, I'm watching this. Like, feel free to hop in if you'd like to. Um, it's not a forceful thing. It's just like an easy way to say, man, we're gathering together and, and who knows what God can do through this. Um, the reason I love Facebook Live is because it's so interactive and everyone's on Facebook all the time, as, yeah. as we all know, because <laughs> we're all probably on it way too much anyway. Yeah. Um, but it's a great way to ask people to connect with us. And so uh, today we're going to sing together. Uh, we're going to have a time of gratitude where you can comment some things that God is doing in your life. Uh, we're going to read scripture. We're going to talk about scripture. Uh, I'm going to do a Q&A with Halsey on something at the end, um, and then also kind of look at what's coming uh, up in the season for our church. And so as we dive in today, uh, we're going to sing a song called Graves into Gardens that we've been singing a lot in our church. And as we dive in today, um, the, the verse that God really put on my heart and has been put on my heart a lot recently is John 6, verse 35, when Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And as I was thinking, even as a pastor in this season, kind of what is my role um, to love our church and our community and everybody around us? And what God just keeps speaking over me is like, give them Jesus. Mm. Give them Jesus. That we don't offer ourselves, um, that we don't offer you know my perfection or Halsey's perfection or our answers to everything. But wherever you're at today, man, if you will come to Jesus, where, whatever you need, whether it's something in your marriage, whether it's something in your personal life, whether it's something uh, maybe like a financial need, like Jesus says, I will provide for you. And so wherever you're at, just during the service, be inviting Jesus into that place. And so let's worship together to today. This is a song called Graves in the Gardens. Sing, I've searched the world. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures the fame are never enough. And you came along, and put me back together. better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Sing, I'm not afraid. I'm not
give beauty for ashes He'll turn shame into glory You're the only Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus.
Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove to more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him. last line for grace to trust him more and I think part of the way that we learn to do that is by hearing testimonies of his faithfulness in our lives and in the lives of others so I just want to encourage you to put it in the chat of how has God been faithful to you in the last few months I know it's been a rough time everybody's struggling but let's just Rejoice in how God's been faithful to us. I love um, Psalm 9 1. It says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, and I will recount all of his good and wonderful works. So, what are some of those works in his life? It could, uh, in your life, just things that, how has God been faithful to you? Um, it can be small, it can be big, it can be an answered prayer. Um, there's just so much. So, I'd love to hear about those and just take some time to remember those publicly that yeah. God has been faithful. And as you put those in the chat, of the ways that God's been faithful and good to you the past few months, a lot of everything going on, it just enables us to see those things as well and to mm -hmm. rejoice with you. Yeah. You know, God is doing so many great things in the world. And um, as a church, like what mm -hmm. we're just called to do is to come together and to share those things um, because it reminds us how good God is. God does good things in our life, but he also does things in other people's lives as well. Yeah. I love that. Logan's healing. Amen. The Lord. <laughs> That's one for my whole life. I'm going to be able to trust him more because of Logan's life. So, um, Yeah, Logan's healing. Most of my things. I'm still working remotely. Yeah. Having a job right now. Being able to work. Some of those out for us. Yeah, I've, and more time with my family, Kaylee. I really enjoyed that too. It's been really nice. Amy, peace in the midst of a lot of lots of uncertainty. Yeah, it's been crazy when you pray for peace. God really does give it to you in the midst of all of that's going on. Keeping your family safe from COVID nineteen, absolutely. Uh, reminding me in His Word how He brings things together for good. Connecting with people in ways I never thought I would before um, before coronavirus. God work. He does work unexpectedly. Absolutely. Mm. Same. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things for me that God's been doing this season is just reminding me of like the importance of the other people in your life. Mm. And. Uh, you know, this is, season has been crazy. I mean, maybe this is like this for you too, but for me, it's been like one day I will feel like I'm so close to God and I'm on the mountaintop and like, man, my faith is so strong. And like the next day I will feel like just so weak and like, God, where are you? <laughs> and some days I pray and I feel like the presence of God. And I'll be honest, some days I pray and I feel like I just am not connecting with the Lord. And... One of the things that even God kind of was showing me last night as you were praying for me, Halsey, was just like, um, man, we need to get together and pray and share testimonies because mm -hmm. like we can be strong for each other in this season. Yeah. And like all of us don't have to be strong all the time because we have each other. And so I've just been reminded of like in the moments maybe when I'm not feeling it, there are people around me in our community that are just thriving with God. And just being around those people, man, it's so uplifting to my faith. And it's so encouraging because I feel like I don't have to be like perfectly strong. And yeah. I'm just reminded that like, you know, what we offer this world is Jesus, that Jesus is the perfect one, you know? Mm -hmm. And even me as a pastor, like I can not be feeling it sometimes, you know? And God can still be good mm -hmm. and do his thing and he's empowering people around me. And so it takes the weight off when you feel like you don't have to save the world, you know? Yeah. And if you're a parent here right now, like you don't have to save your children like god is over your children mm -hmm. and if you're married and your marriage is tough because of all this like the holy spirit is the one who heals you are not the healer you know 
And if you're anxious right now and you need peace, like you don't have to like work yourself into peace because Jesus will bring our peace to us. And so just the ability to rest in that and to not always feel condemned because there's no condemnation for those in Christ. And so just thank you for the, uh, the testimonies. Surely I love that giving us grace in the midst of everything that we go through. Yeah. When we go through it, if we fail, there's grace for that. Just right now, I want to speak a word over anyone that's feeling down right now in this season. I want to remind you that Jesus said that he will provide for you, and that includes peace. If you're not feeling it today, that's okay. Just sit here. Just come rest with us in the grace of Jesus. If you're not feeling it, if your body's aching, if your mind is all over the place, just come and rest a while with us. Rest in the grace of Jesus because it is over you today. I was reminded that, you know, pandemics have a way of just kind of breeding gratitude if we let them, like being able to get food at the grocery store. I remember there was like a, it was hard, like it was scary. So just those little things in life, um, I think that those can kind of be highlighted sometimes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just say a prayer of gratitude. Um, Father, we, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for all of the good things in our lives. And Lord, we confess so often we get so focused on the negative things or the things that don't go the way that we want them to. But Lord, in this moment, as a group, as a church of people, um, as a community, we just say thank you. Thank you for our life. Thank you for your provision. Every day of our life, you have provided what we need, and we just thank you for that. Um, Lord, we thank you for the air in our lungs and just your, um, your goodness to us. And Lord, we thank you for your grace, how you draw near to us and you're ever present with us. And we just thank you for giving us this time to just remember that, to soak in that. We thank you for the testimonies. We thank you for healing and protection and provision, Lord. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, so this time, if you have your Bible, I wanna encourage you to grab that. And if you were lazy and came without your Bible and it's the other, <laughs> other room, there is grace. And so <laughs> go grab that Bible if you can. If you have a hard copy, I wanna recommend that you um, get that. Um, there's just something about holding it in your hands. You can use the fake Bible on your phone, that's cool. Uh, no judgment, but um, I, I just like holding it in my hands in a way which notifications like don't pop up on this thing in case you've noticed or whatever, or I'm not tempted to like, you know, hop on something else or whatever. <laughs> um, and so I want to encourage you to grab your Bible at this time um, and turn me to Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. You know, one of the things that God also has just been speaking to me in this season, just the importance of us like really getting into the word uh, together as a, as a church and as a community and diving in. Uh, together. And so obviously the sermon today is going to be a lot shorter and I don't even know if you can call it a sermon. I'm just going to share some thoughts from it. Um, but Matt, I just want us to be in the word, open Bibles, open hearts to what God wants to speak to us today. Uh, we're going to be in Acts chapter 2 verses 42 through 47. So grab your Bible, maybe grab a journal, uh, grab a pen to take some notes with me here. Uh, we're going to be in verses, uh, Acts 2 verses 42 through 47. And uh, this passage is always vital to the church because it's a picture of what the early biblical church looked like. And so like uh, Acts chapter 2, uh, 42 through 47. Um, it, it's an important passage because it's, it's a look at the early church and what it was intended to look like. Um, but I think that it is especially relevant for us in this season that we're currently in. Because um, I think sometimes when we read this passage right here, you've probably heard this before. Um, I think there's a temptation to uh, kind of maybe put like a, an Instagram filter on the book of Acts and it, it kind of inspires us and it looks all, you know, like when you have like a picture, but then you have like a filter on, it looks like way better than it really looked, you know, <laughs> which is ironic because like the fact that we're sharing something means why would we need a filter? We already wanted to share it. But anyway, it's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. um, and we can read this passage and it's going to sound so beautiful and inspiring and we will be tempted to think that, well, that's because they weren't going through a pandemic like we are, you know? Um, but in reality, the church is um, experiencing a lot of persecution in this moment. A little context is, I mean, think about it. They have just crucified Jesus, uh, but then he rose from the grave and ascended into heaven. And he's, he's building his church now. The church is going out to share the gospel. 
Um, but in this moment, they are facing major persecution, as you're gonna see, to where it gets so bad that like in the next couple of chapters, the church is gonna begin to come together to pray for boldness. And so once again, as we read this, I think it's relevant for us because there are maybe things getting in the way of them being the church like they might normally want to be. You know, they're pressing on and building a beautiful community regardless, and that's what we wanna do as a church. Mm -hmm. And so Acts chapter two, starting in verse 42, um, and follow along with me in your Bible, it says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, and all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs are being done through the apostles, and all, who were, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. And so with, with that passage in mind, we are starting a brand new sermon series today entitled Pandemic Proof. And the title today specifically, if you're going to write something down, my title is the main idea and it's this. The church is pandemic proof. Mm. Put that in the chat, okay? Amen. Everyone put that in the chat. Put the church the chat. is pandemic proof, right? There's something about when you type it out yourself and you put it in the chat that really makes it hit home for you. Uh, I want someone to put that in the chat. I want all of you to put that in the chat. The church is pandemic mm. proof. Amen. And I say that because I think right now what's happening is I think a lot of people are looking at the world and maybe even us specifically, we're looking at the church during the season where most churches are not gathering in public and big gatherings. And uh, we're like, man, how is the church going to continue being the church? How is the church gonna sustain itself if we can't uh, get together in big groups like we normally do, okay? Because in case you haven't noticed, uh, big gatherings are out of style right now. <laughs> Large groups of people getting together in one room, breathing the same air and oxygen is out of style like baggy pants, you know, because right now <laughs> skinny pants are winning, in case you haven't noticed that. Um, you know, someone was saying big gatherings are so 2019, and that's so true. Big gatherings are so 2019. And so there's this problem where I think a lot of us kind of associate what it means to go to church um, or to gather with the church as like everybody getting in this room together for a big gathering and singing music and listening to a sermon and all that kind of stuff. And also there's this problem because we can't gather, but there's like this, this massive need that we need to gather because people are isolated, people are hurting, people are discouraged, people like people need hope more than ever in this season. Mm -hmm. And yet what I wanna tell you is that if we build church and do church, just like the Bible says, right? Like not like kind of our cultural construct or, or how we were raised or what it's, what's, what it's been done like recently, but can you imagine if we literally just said like, we're just gonna do church like the Bible says. Mm -hmm. like, like we're just gonna open this book up right here. We're gonna put away all of our ideas, all of our preconceived notions, you know, how it was when I was coming up and what my grandma did and all that, you know, we're gonna put all that aside. We're, we're thankful for that. But we are just going to open up this book and however it says to do church, that's how we're gonna do church. Mm -hmm. And what I wanna tell you today is that as the community here at New Day, if we were to do that, that no matter what happens in the fall, whether we do big gatherings or not, like we will thrive as a church because the church is meant to be so much more than just one big gathering of people in one room together. Yeah. And I think as Christians, um, what we have to realize is this is actually a really good opportunity for us uh, as a people because um, this is going to force us, I believe, to become a more biblical church, which in the end is going to make us a more effective church. Because this season is going to force us to be able to come together um, as a people beyond the big church, but in homes throughout the week like the church in Acts. And so what, what I want to let you know right now, as you're thinking about the church and the future, I, I just want to throw this out there. Like, I think going forward, we need to just accept that the rest of this year is going to look radically different. Yeah. And so any preconceived idea of what it was gonna look like or what we were gonna expect, we need to like just let that be and we need to go on an adventure with Jesus and just say, <laughs> listen, let's just experiment the rest of the year, right? I love it. Uh, recently, I went to Austin for a couple of days and um, I love going there to hike and they have beautiful hiking. And uh, I went on this, this trail and um, I had this thing when I went where I was like, I'm going to, 
Um, I'm going to open myself to like kind of be more on an adventure. I'm not going to have it all planned out or whatever. And so when I went there, like I couldn't eat like all the things I normally eat because I'm like, I'm going to eat new things, right? Because if I went there, I would just eat like Chipotle, then Chick-fil-A, Chipotle, <laughs> then Chick-fil-A, and then a Pollo Loco because that's like all I ever eat, right? And so like... I cook occasionally. Yeah. And so I was like, well, I'm in a new place. I want to try some new restaurants or whatever, or whatever, new chains. And so I didn't allow myself to do any of the normal stuff. And then I went on this hiking trail. And when I was on this hiking trail, I was like, at least one time, I'm going to go off the beaten path. And true story, um, I'm going on this, this path or whatever, and I see this kind of, kind of like not very uh, well-defined path, but it's like there's something there, and I kind of see it, you know? And I go down it, and it's this long journey, like way off the normal beaten path of this hiking trail. And the whole time I'm kind of doubting, I'm like, is this just going to like lead me to like a dumpster or something? Or is it, you know, <laughs> lead me to like a, a bear or something bad? You know, all these thoughts are running through my mind. But true story, when I get to the end of it, there's this like beautiful like overlook of the Austin Hill Country. Mm -hmm. And it was like such a beautiful sight that I just literally sat down for like an hour just enjoying this moment and enjoying the beauty. And it just reminded me of like, man, when we are open to what God wants to do and God doing something new and different, mm -hmm. we find so many beautiful things. Yeah. That what if God is wanting to do something new in our lives and in our church and we're just missing it because we we're unwilling to step into the new. We're, we're unwilling to open the, our idea, our minds to the fact that God is something different for us. And so I think for us, uh, just as we look at this passage today really briefly, I just want you to open your mind to what church could look like and, and maybe God has something more beautiful and something better for us that, that maybe we've been missing and maybe God is showing that to us during the season of COVID-19 because as Christians, we know God's always at work and God's always doing good. And so even when the world's like freaking out, like we are always suspicious of setbacks, you know, like we're always like, okay, hey, well, well, God, God's in this somewhere, right? And so I want to point out just three words here really quick as we go on an adventure this, um, th for the rest of this year as a church together. And I want to point out three words in this passage and that, that's it. Really, the first word is in verse 42, the word devoted. If you're taking notes, write that down. Mm. And then in verse 44, I want you to highlight the word together. So verse 44, the word together. And then lastly, in verse 47, um, the word added. And I want you to notice these words, because once again, this is like really the beginning of, of the early church and, and kind of how uh, God is kind of showing us what the church is supposed to look like to, to be uh, faithful and fruitful in the world. And what you notice in verse 42 is it says, and they, were, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And I love that word devoted because I think it, it, it's a really good um, image, but sometimes we don't understand exactly what the Bible means when it says that. I think in our world, when we hear the word devoted, we think um, like, you know, like someone who's like obsessed with something or really zealous, you know, like, you know, girls at like a, like a One Direction concert or Backstreet Boys or <laughs> New Kids on the yeah. Block, whatever your generation is, you know, devoted, what, whatever was the but... boy band, if you're, it's like the same thing over and over again. It's like a, like a generational thing. Um, but that's not like devoted. That's like, that's crazy. That's a totally different thing, you know? Um, but the word devoted, it doesn't, it's not meant to mean, um, like, like crazy or obsessive. Uh, the word devoted in the original language, it means to continue in. Mm -hmm. And so what, what the author Luke is saying when he wrote that they were devoted is he's saying they were continuing in the ways of God, um, even beyond the normal gathering. What is so profound about the early church and what was so unique about them was they carried their faith beyond the temple. And that was shocking. Just like today, but in that day, like, like religion and religious practice was very formal. Um, it was very structured. Um, and that can be good because we see even here the church still gathers at the temple. We're, we don't do away with the big gathering, but we're, we're always um, adding on to that, this idea that we're gathering in the homes beyond the normal church gathering. And so the word devoted means they were continuing in. So they would be at the temple and they would be seeing people and they would be hearing the, the teaching of the word and they'd be praying. But then because they were devoted, they carried it over into the home. And so they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching, the fellowship, to the breaking of bread. So like, like when you go to a football game, right? And there's a bunch of people there, which no one's doing that either right now. Everyone meets at the same place for this game. And it's a lot of fun. And it's this you know, energizing environment. But then when everyone's done, they get in their cars, they leave, and they go live separate lives, right? But the church is different. We're not just a big gathering in that sense. We come together, but whenever we leave, we're still devoted to one another. 
by meeting in homes throughout the week. And so whenever we start a new day, uh, man, one of our core values, and you hear about it all the time, is real family. We say that all the time. Real, we want to be a church that feels like real family. Yeah. And I like that word real because I feel like it holds other words accountable. You know, like if I asked you how many friends you have, you'd probably say, you know, so many. But then if I said, how many real friends do you have? Right? It's like, oh, that's a smaller number. It's like, well, what is a friend actually? You know? <laughs> And, and that was kind of our hope as a church where it's like we want not, don't just want to say that we're family, but we want to be a real family. Like we're on a journey to see what would it look like if people came in and said, man, there are people in this church who are doing life together, life on life beyond just the Sunday service. Man, what would that look like, right? And so it's like we're on this journey, but now God's like, okay, prove it, right? <laughs> you can't get in the big gathering, right? So this is the moment we're going on an adventure to see what that would look like. But the way that they were devoted was it meant that they were about the things of Jesus and loving each other beyond the Sunday gathering. Yeah. But then moving on, it says in verse 44, they were together. They were together. And then in verse 44, it says, um, they were together and they had all things in common. And I love that so much because one of the things I've been really thinking about in this season um, and I think it's a good thing to think about is I think sometimes like, I mean, it, listen, it's good to donate money online and it is good to, um, you know, give to food drives. All those things are wonderful. And as Christians, we should always be about those things. But sometimes I wonder if maybe the reason why we do those things is because we don't know real people in real life and real needs. And we have this sense that we want to help. We want to make a difference, right? But maybe we're not connected enough to people in a really real, deep, intimate sense to really know where they're at in life and like what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And as the people of God and, and as the church, um, man, we are just called and compelled to do life with fellow believers in such a way that we get beyond all the normal, um, all the small talk, and we really get to the core of like, man, where are you at with God? And how are you doing personally? Mm -hmm. And how can I help? Yeah. I mean, can you imagine if every, listen, if every single person in the world would just do what the Bible says, mm -hmm. Like every, every person would have probably 10 to 12 people in their life that loved them, that cared for them, that were encouraging them and building them up during this time. Yeah. Like nobody would be alone. If we would just listen to what God's word says and live life in community, like, like nobody would be alone. But we're so tempted to, to isolate ourselves. Mm -hmm. And what I think is unique in this season is I think if, if this season has shown us one thing, it's that, listen, the internet is not the future of the church, okay? <laughs> like Facebook, like, like this is awesome. I'm glad we're doing this, right? But like, it's not like, yeah, we don't need people. Or we're, no, everyone's like, oh, okay, I get it now. We need people. Yeah. And so like the power of, of being together, but I love how like whenever they came together, they were meeting one another's needs. That we live in community because we want to meet mm -hmm. real needs. We, wanna, we need people to care for us and we need people that we can care for. And then the last word is added. It says, praising God adding favor with all the people, and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So I just want to paint a picture for us, man. What if in this coming season, right, because let's be honest, like for the rest of this year in our culture, this might be the greatest moment of isolation. Mm -hmm. This might be the greatest moment of isolation ever, like in recent history. What if for the church this was our greatest moment of community ever. Yeah. Like, I, I believe this is the time for the church to really shine in community and love and supporting each other. Mm -hmm. The like the difficult times are the moments to really shine God's love. And so man, I, I believe that the church is pandemic proof. And so when the world and the culture heads into something like this and we're tempted to be about either self-preservation or isolation, the church is pandemic proof because we are devoted, meaning that we are continuing in the ways of Jesus no matter what comes our way. But even when we're not gathering in the church building, because the church has continually faced persecution, right? Mm -hmm. And so they, they, there has to be a structure for when you're persecuted and we can't get found out with like hundreds of people coming together, how do we worship? And what the Bible says is they continue on into it in the homes. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we do this is because, man, Jesus has revealed to us his heart and he was relational. We always forget yeah. that. Jesus would literally recline at the table with people. He would eat food with people, he'd recline at the table, and he would hang out. Mm. And so as we draw to a close, man, I really wanna encourage all of us, uh, we're gonna talk about community groups here in a second. Um, man, I just really want every one of us to pray 
about living life in community. We have groups that we're starting to walk together called community groups in the fall, and they're always important. But right now for our church moving forward, like those are the Thanks, main sir. ways, the main way that, that, that like our in-person experience, if we have one in the fall, is gonna be in our community groups. Yeah. And so that's really important. And as we come to a close, I, I was just reminded this week, I was kind of reflecting on our, our journey as New Day. And it's crazy. We started New Day less than a year ago. And so we're still like this brand new thing, even though we're in these crazy times. And I was kind of, we, we've been going through like our pictures and stuff recently and kind of getting organized this weekend. Yeah. And I noticed, I, re, I was reminded of something interesting that in this past year, um, New Day was fortunate to be featured in both of the papers that most of us read, which is the, the Houston Chronicle and The Leader, that different stories have been done. And yet what I noticed was the, the reason why those stories were there was because as a church, we were taking a risk and doing something different and like, people took notice, the world took notice. And so one was like, we were restarting our church and becoming a new church and changing our name. And so they're like, okay, we, okay what's happening here? This is, this is different, you know? Don't hear about this a lot. And then during the pandemic, we did Easter on the roof, which that was a cool experience. So fun. And um, the Chronicle's like, yeah, we heard that this thing's happening and it's different. Mm -hmm. And so you know, can, we, can we look at it or whatever? And it just reminded me that the, the world truly is watching. Mm -hmm. And yet far bigger than any event or anything like that is just doing life together and that if we will walk together and love each other, like as it says here, the Lord added to the number day by day that people will notice and they will wanna be a part of that kind of community. Yeah. And so our vision for the fall, um, as many of you know, is we're gonna be gathering on live stream and we're actually investing in some, some equipment, some technology, some, some things to do that even better. And so we'll probably be on Facebook Live for the next couple weeks, um, but then we're moving to still an interactive uh, service at 10 a.m. with everyone together. Um, but with more elements, we're going to try and do it at the church with some new things that we're getting. And so it's going to be a great experience. Um, but our church is going to meet ideally in person in the fall. Uh, but it's going to be in small community groups and small groups of people. And so as you sign up for a group and get in a group, a lot of our groups will probably start online. Um, but if our groups and if our people feel comfortable um, as, as things go along and as people are being healthy and safe, we are going to move to more of an in-person experience. And so we're gonna have an in-person experience as a church, even oh, if it's not, I, need it. I know, even if it's not hundreds of people <laughs> in the room it. because the church is pandemic proof. Yeah. Um, but as we finish today, I wanted to do one last thing. I wanted to interview my wife just really quickly um, my because my wife is the, um, the godmother of community groups, I say, because uh, <laughs> she uh, has been in groups with, with me um, for years and years now. She's hosted groups and um, I know a lot of times whenever we talk about the scriptures and living in community, it can sound really beautiful and compelling. But what I've noticed when I talk to people is it sounds beautiful and they like it, but they've got some questions they don't want to ask about it, or they've got some reservations, or they're busy, or different things like that. And so that was the scripture, this beautiful image. And now we're going to do some real talk right here <laughs> with, with my wife who's been in groups and who has led groups and hosted groups, just so you can kind of hear a really real perspective about what it's going to look like whenever you're walking with a group in community, why it's good, and how we can overcome the challenges that keep us in isolation. Yeah. So the first question, baby, is from, and this is real talk, from you real actually talk. Having, okay. from having actually been in a group. Real talk. Why is being in a group or living in community, why is it uniquely good for you? So, um, I looked it up last night, but in scripture, there are like 59 one another passages and verses. And I was thinking about that, like, that's a lot. That's a lot of things. And I was thinking like, how can we obey those verses if we're not with one another? Like you can't, you can't do it. Um, and I know in, in maybe some cultures or contexts, it might be, easier to do it like organic or whatever if you live in a village or whatnot but for us I really I'm just I just so believe that like groups are the best way that we can in our context live out the one another verses like mm -hmm. it might not be that way in you know a rural village somewhere but for us like the way our society is is built up it's just it just works it's mm -hmm. it's really the only way that works I think and, and yeah. how is that good for your soul so soul believe yeah in. so I think that when we live out the, the Bible and the ways that it says to like Jesus has this vision for human flourishing and he's obviously made it clear that that's important mm -hmm. um, so when we live in community when it it touches your soul because we were made to live that way mm -hmm. like when you have someone praying for you knowing you when they can meet your needs when you can meet theirs like it's just it's just the way we were meant to live is mm -hmm. with deep connections with with people 
um, in a small community. And it's interesting too, like more and more studies are showing as like mental health issues are, are growing and stuff like that. Like more and more studies are showing like we need this. People mentally, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, we are just meant for it. And Jesus has been telling us that for thousands of years. Like we need this. Yeah, one of the things I heard on, online was um, someone was saying that what social media is doing is it is making us um, more connected to the people that are not close to us and far less connected <laughs> to the people that are close to yeah. us. And so I, I think it's an opportunity to get like in the room with people like in flesh. Yeah. Um, there, I, and I can't explain it. I'm not a scientist, you know, and I don't know all the things of God either. Like, I mean, God is far greater in his comprehension. Like, like I, I can know a little bit of his goodness, yeah. but I, what I can tell you, there's something about getting in the room with other people and, and connecting on a level and talk like, like in life, if, if you're struggling, all you need to do is get in a room with a few people and talk about Jesus Yeah. and everything instantly becomes better. It kind of brings it to, it fleshes it out. It takes it from paper into life. And I really yeah. feel like that's where transformation happens. And one of the things that we've been uh, big on at New Day, um, and once again, this season is forcing us to really learn this, is uh, we, we wanted to, we want to change the way people see church. Like when you say mm -hmm. like go to church, I think most people think in their minds, they think, um, oh, go to the building or the service or whatever. Yeah. And we just see a day when people think of like going to church, like just as much they think about like gathering in the living room, like like it says in Acts, breaking bread and fellowship with other believers. Um, but once again, the, the, the reason why we do that is because it is it is good for us and, and there are unique things about that that maybe we don't get at a big gathering. And so yeah. what does being in a small group or a community group do for our faith um, that a big service cannot? So a service does certain kinds mm -hmm. of things, but what does getting in the home do uniquely yeah. that maybe you can't do with hundreds of people? Well, both are important, both are vital. Um, when you're with someone, face to face and we're eating spaghetti and you know you mentioned something we can have a, a, a connection like ministry happens face to face yeah. and that just it can't happen like in the minute 30 second response time that you have like those deep like oh you're struggling with that let's talk about it let's take 45 minutes and have a discussion where we're ministering to one another that's just it just can't really happen in the in the time frame that we have Mm -hmm. um, so just so much of ministry just happens at the dinner table, just talking to one another and um, maybe in a less structured way, just, just talking to one another and being able to like be real with one another in the flesh is mm -hmm. so important. So the big gathering, absolutely, that's so important, but also those, it's like the one-on-one -on -one times, it's just, it, yeah. that's where things really change and transition and yeah. grow. Yeah, like she said, I think it's really personal too. I think yeah. a lot of times, um, and we leave our, people always ask like, how do we do community groups? We literally say, it's Acts 242. Like that <laughs> verse, those are the four things we do. We, the apostles teaching, fellowship, we share a meal, breaking bread, and we pray together. Yeah. And we intentionally leave those groups kind of open-ended because what I have found as a pastor is a lot of times people come to church, they're coming to the service and like, listen, we're singing great songs and we're preaching about good stuff and all that's good. Um, but when you get in a group and you, we, we kind of leave them a little bit more open-ended, like we, we kind of say, hey, what are you thinking? What do you need? What's going on in your mind? And yeah. like, we've been teaching all these great things and the guy's like, hey, I'm not even sure God exists, you know? Yeah. And so he's got this burning question, this thought or this burning struggle of like, hey, I'm super depressed, you know? And those groups become that place where you can bring those individual personal things out because so often it's like we want to pursue God, we want to grow, but there's something standing in our way. Yeah. And so groups are really designed for us to have a place where we can really talk about real things in life that we're going through mm -hmm. and have people minister to us and pray for us in ways that are meaningful. Yeah. Um, next question real quick. Uh, why do you think people struggle getting in a group? I think... Like, like, like re re real talk. Real right? talk. Real talk. I think we're... Number one, we're just too saturated in the American individualistic, you know, culture. Um, we really view our faith and our life as like, it's our faith and we'll go to this event. And I think the big gathering kind of enables people to do that. But I think when we grow in the faith and we kind of learn a little bit more about what Jesus is actually calling us into, he's calling us into a, into a family. Mm -hmm. That's what... Christ, like Christian is a family name. It's not like a religion that I kind of agreed with. It's like Jesus is, he was building this thing called the church, which is a family. So I think if we kind of shift our perspective from my life and what I'm doing, and I add a little bit of church on the side to give me a boost. Um, but really, if we understand like Christian is, it's, you're in a family now, and those things might should take precedence over other things that we might give it mm -hmm. to. 
Um, and then another thing is maybe it seems a little weird, a little radical. Like to, if we're honest, it seems like the uber religious people do that. And I'm just going to kind of watch because it's a little bit scary, you know? Mm -hmm. So, 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 so real quick. Yeah. Cause, cause, cause I hear what you're saying. And, and so a lot of people are probably like, you know, like introverts yeah. or, or have legit, like, like maybe some social anxiety. Yeah. So listen right now, if you comment in the chat, if you're an introvert, or if like whenever you get like let's be honest like whenever you're like maybe gonna go to a group or something maybe it's big or small you kind of get some social anxiety l l let me see you in the chat me. let me see if that's there <laughs> for you right what would you say to that person maybe like maybe i'm, yeah. I'm an intro like listen i know it's good i know it's great to, to get together throughout the week i want to carry on church beyond the building yeah. i want to get in the home i want to share a meal i want to pray but like, I just get this uneasiness scared. or <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say something awkward in the group when yeah. I get there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, James. I think yeah. we all have this to a degree. Yes. Garrett Holmes. Garrett. Yeah. Um, me too. That's what I would say. It's like, I, I'm always afraid I'm going to say something dumb. And a lot of things, a lot of times I do say <laughs> just like stupid stuff. And then I'm like thinking, I'm like, why did I say that? You know? It's like, so how's your cat? I'm like, uh, uh, what? It's like, why'd you? Yeah, I don't know. But I say <laughs> stupid stuff, you know? And I think like the more people I talk to, we all struggle with social anxiety. I do every yeah. single time. Um, I, we all, I'm, I'm, quarantine has made me more introverted. So I, I get it. Like I'm, I'm pretty introverted. I get social anxiety myself. And I found that Probably more times than not, I don't really want to. Like, there's something in my spirit that's resisting. Like, I just don't want to. Um, but every time I just, like, push through and I do it anyway, it's always such a blessing. So, so can I just always. say that pe people are blowing up the chat right now. Because, once again, <laughs> I, I think we're hitting on something, right? Everybody's... Like, but, but listen, <laughs> he, 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 here, here's what I've learned. Because I feel some of that, too. Um, and, I mean, I, it's like, I, I'm weird. Like, I love it. Like, it, it jazzes me up. But it also, like... I guess we lead a group. Sometimes we feel kind of pressure or whatever. Yeah, every time. Um, cleaning up your house, all that <laughs> stuff. Stressed. Yeah. Um, but man, what I've learned is there is beauty. Because um, I, I think a lot of people we feel that. And eventually as we get older, I think, and I see this sometimes, is like we kind of begin to shut ourselves off from the world. Yeah. Instead of like, man, if, if we have anxiety or we're weak or we have a problem, it is so beauty, beautiful to insert ourselves into community and know, yeah. listen, we love you even if you're awkward. Yeah. Like if you feel socially awkward, yeah. one option is hermit yourself in a room and never see anybody. The other option is to realize that you were loved and that mm -hmm. like you don't have to perform here and that we're here yeah. in like, and, and I think we can both know like which trajectory of those two things probably ends in a better, more loving place. And so yeah. um, I've had introverts tell me that like community is extra important for them because mm -hmm. as we always say, like nobody plans to become like get off my lawn guy. Like, you know, the kind of the person that like, you know, just can't deal with people anymore and is kind of grumpy and kind of in their own world, you know, but over time we can clam up like that, you yeah. know, and community kind of brings us out of our shell yeah. um, and into that. Um, and I would say even just speaking to my introvert friends, we need you. Like you yeah. bring something to a group of people that all the extroverts who are like tons of energy and all that. Like there, there might be someone in that group who really needs your insight because introverts think, you know, they observe and we need the, the wisdom and the, the experience. Um, introverts can be such good friends to people. So you're needed. So introverts, I feel you. I get social anxiety, but, um, so, so just the, the, always been a the, the godmother gets so of groups gets social Every time, anxiety, so but, it's just natural. It, but I have never gone to a group or had a group in my home and not it has never not been a huge blessing yeah i've and, never and, been and, and that's upset. the reason why whenever we do groups like we do them like you know we, we try not to have groups that meet eternally but like meet usually for like a year together and so a lot of times what happens is it's kind of awkward at first but you get close and connected and so it's yeah. not like every week you're meeting brand new people you're building relationships yeah. and part of it's like it, you know it takes a semester to get to know people Absolutely. Um, so a couple more questions real quick because I'm, okay. I'm vibing this if, if we're going too long y'all can kind of log out but we're, man to. we're just going to keep chilling doing this <laughs> Um, what would you say to someone who says, I'm, I'm just too busy or I have too much going on? Like, what, what would you say, Halsey? Real talk. With all of the humility and grace, I would say, look at your screen time and tell me. Like, and that sounds pretty raw. I don't know. But I think that 99% of the time, that's an excuse. And maybe that we even believe. Um, but often the busiest people I know are hosting the groups. So I don't really know about that. But, and that, and you know, I can, I can imagine a circumstance or a season of life where you truly might 
be very busy. Like, and I get that mm -hmm. those happen yeah, and, that happens, yeah. and that happens and that's cool, you know, but that shouldn't be like standard life. If you are that busy for your whole life, you need to adjust some things. You know, mm -hmm. I think when we're really busy, it could be like, this is a season, it's gonna be rough. But even in those seasons when we are really busy, I know I need people even more <laughs> during mm -hmm. that time because there's stress and things that go along with that. So with tons of grace and all of that, like you are busy, we're all busy, but the busier you are, the more intentional you have to be. Mm -hmm. And maybe it might just, it might be an indication that something needs to give. There might need to be an adjustment because it's just so important. And, and I can say as someone personally who is prone to busyness, like that is my personality. Like I, I don't like just sitting around. Um, I, I, for me, I have found it to be the thing that slows me down yeah. enough to stay in tune with real people and real life, you know? Yeah. And so I, I agree. I think if we're really busy, I, I, sometimes that's kind of why we need it specifically. Yeah. I think it, like community groups kind of keep us from really filling our lives with like kind of lesser things. And so go back to Acts 2, 42, it's just about being devoted. Like yeah. sometimes, honestly, it's not about knowing how you're going to fit it into your schedule. It's just like, hey, listen, this is important. Like if Jesus was here, he'd be gathering with me. I know that's what he would be doing. And so if I would want to be around Jesus, I would have to go do these things and stop yeah. doing so many things. And it's almost like just saying, hey, this is important. I'm devoted. We'll figure it out. Like, that's life. It's like, I'm going to step out and I'm going to trust that we have enough time for this or whatever. But once again, even for us, I mean, the way we do groups, our rhythm is we break during the summer. We break during Christmas. It's, it's not, not eternal. Lifelong commitment. Yeah, we switch things up. And so, but we Andrew, do them by semester. So even right now, we're looking at the next three months. We're going to do community together. And then we're going to see where things are at. So one more question real quick. Yeah. And then okay. we get Go to ahead. We're running out of time. Okay. Um, what are some benefits of being in a group that you have personally experienced? Not just even biblically, but in your personal life. Like, what, what are some things that, like, just some things that mm -hmm. have happened in your life that God has done that you've experienced? Yeah, so I've shared this before, but um, this was back when we were white out. It was years ago, but I've shared this story before, like, when my mom passed away. And that is really awkward. Like, when someone, you know, it's an awkward sort of time and I remember we went to a group for the first time after that we we had people in our home and it was just like the elephant in the room and I was like a you know sobby mess and I just remember the the girls who were in that group they stopped and they just like cried with me for like 30 minutes and mm. it and I can tell you like that and they like they went there you know it's so easy to be like oh I don't really want to talk about it but they went there they were committed because they had their their plate of spaghetti and I can tell you like it was like a balm to my soul like it healed me in like it, it was like healing for me in a way that I can't I can't express other than like I get why Jesus says to mourn with those who mourn like it was so good mm -hmm. and so healing for me so that's like what always comes to mind is like why do we do these things it's so that you have somebody when the worst happens or the best happens like you're the, the whole point is like your group comes and like we are your people and we, we got you. And um, you can't be there for 100 people, 200 people. You can't be, but you can be for five, for 10 that are in your group. So that's just something that I'd always, I always go back there. Like that changed me in a yeah. way that I can't really communicate well. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I think for me, one of the things is, and I've shared a lot about this, um, like I think I, I can see in my own life the past six years of like committing to community. Um, yeah. It has kept my heart open in a way um, that I don't think it would be otherwise. Um, I think I don't know about guys, man. We <laughs> we just have a tendency to like just get like angry at the world and like frustrated and like anyone that sees different than us, we can't get along with them. And like mm. I think for me, especially as a man, you know, growing up or getting older, I, it's just kept my heart really soft in a way that I feel like has also benefited our family, benefited yeah. our kids. Our kids love it too. Yeah, our, our kids come, yeah. But but for me, yeah. it's just one of those things, <laughs> it, it keeps it real for me. And yeah. like talking to other men, I mean, we have groups, we'll be like on my back deck talking about life. I would never do that otherwise, yeah. right? And so like the, the, the extent of my relationship with other men would be like, on Facebook when I comment on their posts, you know? Um, or I would just build my life around like two people that I actually like, you know? No. And so I just think it keeps your heart soft. I and mean, when I see Jesus, he was, it's like he was reclining with like tax collectors and sinners and believers and the disciples. I mean, mm -hmm. Jesus was just interacting relationally with people. I mean, how amazing that God was relational. Yeah. You know, that's he was amazing. always going to a meal, with coming from yeah, a meal I mean, or at people. a meal. <laughs> 
And so I, I think a lot of times, you know, we talk about like orthodoxy, like what we believe mm -hmm. about the faith, but it's also the orthopraxy, which means like the things that we do because we believe these things. And so I just think for me, it has kept my heart soft. And I, I yeah. know going forward, it's going to continue to do the same because I'm getting with real people talking about real things, letting my guard down and talking about things I, mm. I can't, I won't mention to you like on a Sunday as we're passing each other saying, hey, how are you? I'm doing great, yeah, cool. <laughs> Which is cool, Listen, I personally love small talk. I'm telling you, like, I actually <laughs> like small talk, you know? But I also like deep talk. And I think that that kind of fosters that over time when you get to know people. And the last thing I'll say is, I know one of the things that we did before all this happened mm. was we would often have new people to the church over to our house for dinner. Yeah. Um, and man, when you spend two hours with somebody over a dinner table, um, you build more of a relationship in two hours than you do two years of casually seeing somebody yeah, at a gathering. True. And so actually I think that groups are the most efficient thing to have relationships because you go deep with people really quickly. Yeah. Um, you build relationships in a way that you cannot otherwise. And so um, it's just yeah. a really wonderful thing. So, um, so as we finish together today, listen, um, here's what we're doing. We're going to be talking over this the next few weeks. And so if you have more questions, we're going to keep talking about groups and the importance of it. And really, man, our, our vision is just to be a people of really deep, uh, connected community in yeah. this season that's going to be isolation for most. That if we create these communities, it'll be the community that we need and that other people need. And so if you want to take that step, which if you're a part of our church, I really hope you do. Uh, I want to encourage you can go online right now, newdaychurch.com, and under the sign-up tab, you can sign up to register for a group. We're, they're not going to start till September, mm -hmm. but we're registering for them right now. There's also a link at the top of this video, there should be, uh, to sign up for a group. And so uh, today we're opening that up for the first time. We have a lot of group leaders that we're training uh, to be ready to receive you, to walk with you. And man, this is our moment, right? We've, yeah. We're coming out of a season of isolation and we're going into a season of isolation but this is the time that we can come and really walk together and be the church. Like, this is our moment to shine. Yeah. Um, there are options for online and in-person community groups. And so whatever that looks like, we are gonna encourage as many of our groups as possible, if it's healthy and safe, uh, to move to in-person ideally. Um, but there's options across the board. Uh, the main thing is whether it's in-person or online, you have a few people that you're walking with, opening up your life to, even if you're busy, even if you have social anxiety, to say, man, I'm, I'm just so devoted to Jesus and to his people that I don't just go to a group because it's good for me, though it is good for me, but also because I want to be a ministry. Um, I want to minister to other people. So go yeah. sign up for that now. Uh, a couple of final announcements. Um, there also, if you want to give online, uh, we would love you to support the work of New Day. Man, God is doing so many things through our community right now. Mm -hmm. um, there's a link at the top. You can also go to newdaychurch.com uh, slash give. I think the, the link might be um, coming up in the chat. Um, once again, if you're new or just watching this or new to the faith or new to New Day, please do not feel obligated to give. We're not looking for your money. Um, but for those of you that are, are, are blessed by this ministry, we would encourage you to support it during this time. Uh, as a church, we're still doing ministry, and so we need people con to continue to faithfully give. Mm -hmm. um, lastly, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are um, getting ready to um, continue our live stream, but we're really going to be upgrading it in different ways and, and hopefully adding some different things, <laughs> adding more, more of a legit kind of music environment to it and different things. Um, and so be on the lookout for that. But I believe next week, one way or another, we're going to be on Facebook Live at 10 o'clock. Uh, so please join us. Please spread the word to anybody else in our community. Let them know, hey, I'm here. I'm in the chat. It's awesome. It's a great experience. Um, and we'll meet, continue meeting um, in that front. And so um, mm -hmm. I love you guys so much. We love you all. Uh, we will see you next week um, here at 10 a.m. Love you guys.